assume you all know. I assume you all know my next guest, Monday through Thursday on the NBC television network at 1 o'clock. I suppose it would be 12 o'clock in the Midwest when we go off. Mr. Tom Snyder comes on with the Tomorrow Show, which he has been doing, I think, for, what, three years or going on their fourth year. It originated out here. He went to New York. He is now back here, and I invited him to join us tonight. Would you welcome Mr. Tom Snyder? You know, I went backstage and I said, what a dump. <laughs> <laughs> well, you work here also, yes, right, in the sir. same studio. <laughs> you know, I, I said to him, I met it legitimately, I walked backstage and I said, I forgot how tall you were. And I don't know why I have that misconception. Well, it's because... <laughs> how tall are you? It's because I'm you're so tall. tall. Yeah. No, but you're sitting down. You never stand on that show, do you? Uh, no, no. Uh, because my knees shake when I stand up. I see. Up. I didn't know that. And as I told you back there, I am absolutely... My palms are sweating. My, uh, my underarms are sweating. I am, I am terrified. Well, come on. Well, now. because you remember the night that you and I did this over on the other side of the room the last night here in Burbank, about three and a half years That's ago. That's right. When you're used to being uh, a host or an interviewer, it's hard to be a guest. It is. I told. I did the same thing with David Frost. I did one of those mm -hmm. ninety-minute things with David, and I told him. I said, "This is very strange because you have reversed the roles." And I said, "I think I'm going to be a terrible guest, as you probably will be too." Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, because it's not. You're well, not. well, you didn't let me down, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. I, but I, I asked how many I, saw it, nobody I announced in advance I was going to be lousy, but <laughs> in other words, you would much prefer to be here. I don't mean this particular desk. Oh, no, but John, <laughs> well, John, I've been trying to knock that down for three and a half years now, and you came out here tonight and started it up all over again, and I'm here to lay to rest the rumor that I have any ambitions for anybody else's job. There's only one job I would like, and that's President of the United States. You get your own plane, you've got nine guys to run it for you, it'd be a super job. But the reason that I'm nervous tonight is because after I received the call from your people that you would like to have me on, which I appreciate, we had a guy on the show one night, and he was talking about uh, dreams and what they mean. And I went to bed, and so help me, I dreamt that I was coming on The Tonight Show. Are you John serious? Press. I'm quite serious. I went to bed, and I had this dream. Because, as you know, and as everybody knows, there's a lot of rumors and a lot of speculation, a lot of talk in the press that doesn't mean anything. So you were very nice, and you said, and now here he is, Tom Snyder, and I came out. And you walked over there. And you said, have you got your car here? And I said, yeah, I got my car here. Well, oh, this is in the dream now. Oh, this is in the dream, yeah. That, I hope it doesn't happen. No. Yeah. And uh, I said, I have my car here. He said, well, let's go out to your car. You said, well, let's go out to your car. And I said, what for? And you said, well, because I, I want to interview you in your car. <laughs> I said, you've got to be out of your mind. He said, no, no, it's never been done before. It's going to be great. Come on. So we went out here to the parking lot, and you had a wireless uh, mic there. And, and we got in the car. In your car? In my car. It was a 1956 Ford convertible. <laughs> and, uh, and we did the interview for about five minutes. We drove over here past Pepe's and around the gas station and came back and got out. And the people here in the studio, we could hear them laughing and, and responding and stuff. And we walked back here and you said, folks, was that great, the interview from Tom's car? <laughs> and they said, boy, what a great interview. And he said, great, because you're never going to see him again. And I went through the curtain and that was the end of the dream. That's so weird. Are you? I don't have my a, car here, John. Are you? A, are you a bedwetter also? I mean, this is. I mean, this is. This is something. This is a. That's a ridiculous dream. But uh, they say the subconscious, everything you've ever learned or remembered, is there. I have strange dreams like that. Did you ever? Every performer has had this dream. You walk out on a stage, get ready to do a show, or a play, and all of a sudden you are in the wrong play. Or you're, you have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. It's just like when I do the monologue. I walk out and the audience is there. <laughs> and I look and it is an absolutely paralyzing. And I think every actress or actor has had that. You have no lines or you don't remember. And everybody else knows their lines. And I've never had you've that never that. had that? And I apparently am the only one who hasn't. I mean, everybody else I've spoken to. Everyone I've ever talked to has had that dream. And it's, you, you wake up in a cold sweat. The man uh, who was the dream expert said the important thing about the dream is, number one, be the star of your own dream. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, have it go the way you want it to go. And number three, be happy with the way it finishes. And if that happens, then you've had a successful dream. He says to analyze dreams. 
Well, I'm going back to that Well, I wasn't I, too thrilled in the car. I, I, well, I, 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 I had some wonderful it. ones when I was younger. I was the star, and they always turned out the way that I wanted to. Uh, you, uh, you had a press conference the other day, so you've probably been asked every question from the press. Uh, Why did you decide to come back to the coast? Were you unhappy with New York City? It beats the hell out of me, John. Yeah? Uh, John, I came back here for a couple of reasons. I have some personal things that I want to attend to here. Uh, I think it's a little bit easier to do television in Southern California, in this building, than it is in dear old Rockefeller Plaza. But you know, I noticed that you even mentioned the New York Times today. It's funny how you maintain connections with that city. Yeah. And I know that you're happy here and that I'm happy here, but I had a great time there. I went there, uh, 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 not very wise, and I think I came back a little bit broader, a little bit smarter. I exposed myself to some different ideas and some different kinds of people. And, uh, <laughs> I see. The city certainly didn't get to you at all. No, 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 it's very chic to put down New York City. It is. And uh, we should not do that. As a matter of fact, the last time I was back there, I came back and said on the show, it's too easy sometimes to do a mugger joke or something like that. And it's not true. New York is one of the most vital cities in the world. And if you've never been there, you've yes. got to go there. It's a stupid thing. And I'm like you. I did the same thing. I had worked here originally, and I'd gone to New York, and I guess I wanted a little change of lifestyle, and I mm -hmm. still go back to New York and enjoy it tremendously. It's a great place to charge your batteries, to get out on the streets, right. you know, and see those people. There's, you know, the guy is still on, on, uh, on uh, 50th oh, yeah. and... Uh, no, no, Moondog is dead. Is Moondog left yes, us? Yes, he is. Uh, I didn't know He that. has left us. But the guy is still there who plays Sixth Avenue. He's got the two drumsticks, okay? And he's out there. In with, the black, the, uh, with the yeah, black? Yeah, that's the guy, Buddy Poor. Yeah. And he plays the street. He plays Sixth Avenue in the summertime, but in the cold weather, he plays 50th Street because it sounds <laughs> a little bit better. Yeah, that's true. You, you see those people in New York that you do not really see out here, I don't think. No, they're all in cars here. <laughs> that's right. They drive around having dreams at the time. Okay, we're going to have a word from one of our sponsors. Uh, we're fully sponsored also. And we'll be right back. <laughs> We are back, and we've got Susie Pichette and Tom Snyder. You've been described, and you, you talked about the press, and sometimes uh, they can get a little bit uh, tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. They've described you sometimes as uh, abrasive, um, too controversial, uh, uh, egotistical, um, uh, kind of heavy-handed. No, you know you've read those things. Just a they? mean guy. Yeah, I would say the Tom, and on the other hand, they say underneath that is, is a nice... Uh, Pussycat. That's not true, John. That's not true. <laughs> mean all There's the way mean all the way to the marrow. I, the, the, the one thing I love is uh, there was a... a I've got the same things. We all get them, John. I got those from my family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the man asked me this question the other day. He said, is it true? that you finished one of the news programs in New York one night and said, well, good night, everybody. I've got to go and take a leak. <laughs> and I said, that story has been clinking around now for the past four or five years, and let me give you the correct story. You know Frank Field, NBC's crack. Well, certainly a urologist. Uh, he and I used to do a little shtick on the news in New right. York, and so one night I was going to say to Frank, well, now here's Frank Field to take a look out the weather and see how the fort rain is coming. Well, don't you know, it's the oldest bloop in the world, and I swear to you, I said, now here is Frank Fields. Take a leak out the, or look out the window and see how the weather's going. Well, by the time the whole thing yeah. got finished, you know, I was uh, being naughty on the air. There is a story going around currently, and then how it started is so ridiculous. And I saw it the other day about Farrah Fawcett Majors having appeared on this show yes. and yes. discussing the fact that her marriage was breaking up with yes. Lee Majors or something. Farrah Fawcett has never been on this show. First of all, uh, she never discussed, I mean, if, if she was on this show, it was a long time ago before she became well-known. Why he hasn't she been on for such a long time? Um, we've asked her to be on the show. I think she's just so busy now and probably gets sort of innumerable requests to be on shows. But uh, that started for a while. Yes, sir. And why it started, we do not know. I think the press picks it up and because it makes copy. A person called the office in New York when we were there a couple weeks ago and asked for a cassette of your show with Farrah Fawcett Majors making that announcement on it. Uh, incidentally, when you mentioned that thing in your monologue about who wants what job, I received a letter the other day. 
uh, from a viewer who said, we think that you are the worst person, me, that's ever been on television, <laughs> that you are the most arrogant person you've ever seen, and we're never going to watch your show until NBC fires you, and we also hear that Johnny Carson is going to take your place. <laughs> Just turned it right around. No, two and a half hours, John. America deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> they would put me right in the room. <laughs> So you, you do the four a week, right? Yes, sir. You're because on Friday you'll have to say, Sir Johnny. You know, oh, you're out here close now. You're a big star now. You don't have to humiliate yourself on a show like this. I know, but I've been being coached all afternoon. <laughs> My staff is busy now cleaning out your offices. <laughs> I understand you're up by Jack in the Box somewhere. My, my, my son told me that your offices are up next to Jack in the Box um, here, that they don't have room in the building. NBC is so busy this year producing <laughs> hit after hit. <laughs> That we don't have space on the lot. You know, the, the space on the lot is all given off to outside shows like right. My Mother the Car or something like that. <laughs> and so we have offices up by Jack in the Box. They're near the hospital, just in case. <laughs> and it's a little walk from here. Strange offices. Now, you're not only going to do the, um, the Tomorrow Show. You're going to stay with that. But are you going to do some, some specials? Or do you want to get into some documentaries or... Well, John, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've read that I'm going to do this show, which I'm not going no, to do. No, that's true. Um, I've, read that I'm, I've read that I'm going to do uh, uh, the news program, which I'm not going to do. Uh, I've read that I'm going to do uh, something on ABC, which I'm not going well, to do. I mean, I'm not going to do any of those things. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't go back on the news here. You, that doesn't intrigue you? I haven't been asked, John. In other words, if they came and said, Tom... No, let's not, let, let's not make a deal here, John. <laughs> I got a lot of guys making... I mean, if somebody said, hey, Tom, we'd like you to do the, uh, the news here. John, I... Because I understand you didn't like to do it in New York. You wanted to get off the news. In well, New suppose that you had to go over and do the news from six to seven and then run in here and do this for three and a half years. And then you start going like that a lot because this is kind of like playing football or baseball. Right. There's a certain amount of tension out here under these lights before these cameras in front of these people. Right. And after three and a half years, it just became time to do one thing or the other thing. And uh, I think it's best for me to follow you and I am very comfortable doing that program. I'm very happy doing it, and I hope to do it for a long, long time. Good. You had uh... I didn't see the... Uh... I didn't see the interview last night. You know, it, was, it wasn't better. I'd like to get a cassette of it. You had uh, Jerry Brown on. Governor Brown gone. was here last night. How'd he, how'd he do? How was he... Well, he's an, he's an interesting man. He's a very interesting guest. I don't think he's a very humorous person. I think he's, uh, he, I think he's quite serious. We got to talking about uh, the fact that, uh, you see, I have this thing, like when you and I and Suzanne and Doc and all these people, when we sign contracts with NBC or whoever it is for three years, that's kind of a promise that you're going to be around for three years. I think when a man goes before the electorate of his country or the state of California and says, I want to be your governor for four years, I kind of think that he has made a promise that he's going to be there for four years, not run for president two years later. So I asked him about that. He said, well, uh, the people of California supported my bid for the presidency. The 65 percent of the people in the Democratic primary uh, wanted me to be president, so they must have supported that ambition. I said, yes, or else they wanted you the hell out of the state of California. So, you know, it goes both ways. In your normal diplomatic <laughs> way. <laughs> In your own non-abrasive manner, you asked yes, the governor yes, that. Yes, That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to, uh, to, uh, to Doc in the monologue. Uh, I know we're running out of time. <laughs> not me. It's going to be three and a half more years. Yeah. That's not what they're saying in New York. But there were, uh, there were uh, a number of, of executives backstage here who are waiting for, uh, for you and I to have a big fight, as they waited some years ago. That true? Yes, that's true. Uh, that's when strange. I did the Today Show some years ago, they were waiting for Barbara Walters and I to hit each other and carry, be carried out of the building with blood coming out of our foreheads. I mean, they, they don't understand that we're all pals, we're all friends. We don't have sleepovers uh, with each other's <laughs> house, generally. Or, uh, no, we don't, or, but I'm here to tell you that if Johnny Carson has good ratings, Tom Snyder has good ratings, because I come on after you. I well, depend nice on you. And, uh, look, any time you want to uh, drop over uh, the house, um, just, just try to find out where I live. No, I don't have to go. Yes, you do, Tom.
It was nice of him to come on. Oh, it's terrific. He'll, he'll follow us right after. I understand he's got tonight, uh, interviews Candy Barr. Is that on the, was that the show tonight, Tom? It's not for the show, John. Excuse me? Candy Barr is right. That's on the show tonight. Candy Barr, if you do not, uh, was one of the first exotic dancers and a lovely looking lady, if I remember. But first, we will do this. <laughs> and Kelly Garrett's here and Dr. Paul Ehrlich, so stay where you are. <laughs> 